So I'd like to take a moment to talk about Unify Design Center. This is something new that we've started using and it's been really helpful when we've been working with our clients. We can show them the plan of their house. We can do the design layout, show them where the wireless coverage is gonna be, how the cameras are gonna cover, and even helps us on the back end. We can take and work on how we're gonna run our cables, cable paths, and gives us a nice complete shopping list at the end of the process. So for this section in the Unify Design Center, we're gonna talk about the cable management. Now there's a great video on Ubiquiti's YouTube channel that can go through all the details of the design center. We're just gonna really focus right now on the cable management. So I thought I'd take a moment to run you through this house that we're working on right now. We're gonna put our rack into the mechanical room. That gives us good access for power and gives us access to get to the attic to be able to make all of our wired runs. Inside that rack, we're planning on putting in a UDM Pro and a PoE switch. From that PoE switch, we're gonna run our cables out to the wireless access points. So we're also installing cameras in this house. So I'm gonna make sure that we pull our cable for the cameras generally with the same path that we do for the access points. So once I have all the devices laid out, I can take and click a button and it's gonna estimate my cable lengths that I need for this particular job. I always go through, make a few adjustments on the routing for how those are gonna be, but that estimate is key because then it helps with my ordering and planning. So now we've got the planning phase done. We're gonna click a couple of buttons, we'll get everything ordered and on the way. But now we're gonna move on to the install phase. We have simulated a rafter system. And what our goal is, is to come and install our cable from here. We're gonna bring that cable up through the rafters to the back wall. And there's a number of different ways that you can take and install. There's J-hooks, D-rings, split rings. Most residential locations, we're gonna use a J-hook or a split ring. Really kind of comes down to many times local building code or personal choice. Many times J-hooks are nice because as you add more cables, if you plan on expanding your system, you can just add additional cables very easily into that J-hook as you go on. We're gonna bring the cable up and over to here. So I'm gonna start my first J-hook right here. Just lose connections. You don't wanna be pulling very hard. I'm gonna pull out a little bit of slack. I typically will support cables every other or every third rafter. So I'm just gonna bend this down a little bit so I get a good path. And then I can just continue running my cable down. I try to find and match the closest size bit and just drill through, feed that cable out, give yourself a little bit of length just as a, a hint. You can leave a little bit of a service loop here. So if you ever need to make some changes or anything in your house, there's going to definitely be some obstructions that you're going to want to be aware of and obviously some areas that you want to make sure that you're very safe with. Now in your attic, there's going to be potentially a number of things that you're going to find. You're going to lar find large pieces of ducting for your heating and ventilation system. You might find some rigid black pipe if you have natural gas in your home. Those are things that you want to be aware of. You don't want to damage, but you can run your cable next to. The one thing that you want to make sure that you're not necessarily running your cable right along with is gonna be a cable like this. And this is Romex. Many times this is in different colors and it's typically gonna be installed in a couple of different ways. Many times they'll be stapled up against the rafters like this and you might even see four or five pieces of Romex. Many times they might be stapled inside of an eave that are running up and again, could be one or could be multiples. And sometimes, and this is the one you wanna really watch out for if you have insulation, is that they could be stapled across the top of the rafters. And those are the ones that you wanna watch out for when you're when you're walking in that space. The biggest thing with Romex that we wanna make sure of is that we're staying away with our networking cables from the electrical. The electrical cable will cause interference. And this is also a good point in time that you're gonna to wanna to check any of your state or local codes for doing electrical installations. I always try to keep at a minimum six inches and I prefer about 10 inches away from any electrical cables. Now there's gonna be the times where it's unavoidable. 
you're going to have cables that are going to run just like this. And this is fine. If you cross an Ethernet cable, you're going to be fine to cross at a 90 degree angle. You always want to make sure that your cable is secured to the structure. You don't want to take and strap it onto other cables, whether that be your coax cable, connect it to any of the pipe that you might have, your water pipes or anything else. Everything should be secured on its own so that they're all independent of any other services that are in your attic. So now we've got the cable all the way pulled out. I'm gonna make sure that I get all my slack pulled down tight. I'm gonna get a hole in the top here, just centered. So we're gonna get our hole through here and take out our link. I'd rather be a couple extra feet long than two inches too short. Now we're gonna go take and make our cut in down below. I like to always take and run a level right next to this for my template. And then I'm just gonna mark just the outside of this. And we know that there's no electrical in this particular wall for because this is our set wall, but at your home or your business, you wanna make sure that you know that there's not electrical, plumbing, or anything running through there. And we can just take our mud ring and slide in just into where it's nice and snug. If you have a wall that has insulation or has obstructions, that's where you would want to look at using a push rod or a set of sticks that are designed to be able to go down into the wall that you could attach to and then continue to pull the cable out through. Run down. Now, terminating the end here is a little bit different than doing your end caps. We're gonna use a, an insert or a keystone, and these are designed, there's a number of different manufacturers, but they all pretty much follow this standard punch down combination on them. We're gonna take and we're gonna strip back a little bit of our sheath here. And most keystones will have an indicator on those, A and B. And if you remember before, we were terminating ours onto the B standard. So I wanna make sure that I'm looking at the bottom here for the B standard. And what we need to do is we need to untwist these. I need to put my orange pair and it's white, orange, orange. And I try to give it a little bit of a pull. I don't wanna get down to where I'm damaging this cable in here. And I wanna keep this relatively short, white, brown, and then brown, white, green, and then just solid green and then the blue pair. Now, we can't leave it like this. We need to actually do what's called terminating the ends of the wires. On the inside of this insert, there are some small metal teeth. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna punch down those wires and it's gonna strip back the outer insulation and make the contact, which will then connect out to our connections. You need to actually kind of apply a fair amount of pressure and push down on until you get that punch. And if you notice, it's now cut this wire loose. And I'm just gonna come down and I'm gonna hit all eight of the wires. So the last thing that usually comes with all keystones is this, which is a little cap that's gonna protect things. And you can just snap that in place. So I've got a single insert faceplate, and I'm going to just hook this and snap it into place. We have a little bit extra slack, which is fine. And then just lightly screw those in. Now you've got your finished outlet, but you're gonna to wanna to label this to the corresponding port on your patch panel. Join us next time when we'll talk about small and medium business deployments.